now. I have a reservation in half an hour. Now I'm gonna show you more. Let me go in there. That's the entry point. down 70 meters straight back up when we finish okay okay key is take your time just follow yeah. me up go on, i'll follow you i'm always the slowest because i do it six <laughs> or seven times a day so i know the pace to go on <laughs> so if you gym, on, eh? you'll be fine <laughs> now, there's helmets and everything in there when we go in there to, okay you're gonna have to wear them just let me know and you can turn around you come straight back out there anytime, okay. all right there's only one way in one way out Maybe he doesn't need one, should be fine.
70 metres under the ground, if you're standing in a precast concrete tunnel. It's actually warmer down here than up there. <laughs> well, you can go through the door there, will you? <laughs> but um, it's precast concrete. Imagine if you know much about the barren, it's limestone, as far as the eye can see. We managed to dig a tunnel all the way down, didn't get a single bit of it. Couldn't find any. <laughs> yeah, completely confused everybody, so they got the geologists and all the historians involved. And there's a legend written down in the 5th century. They think it actually came from an earlier tribal versions of history. And they said there used to be a lake in the Baron, which used to go as far as the Aran Islands. There's a big storm, everything gets washed away. So we've been looking for where the lake is for years. And <laughs> 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 The geologists proved it then, there's lakes, or what they call glacial runoffs, where the, the glaciers were behind us in the fields. They all used to run down into those valleys, there must be waterfalls and stuff a thousand years would be pretty cool. It was a big lake. Oh, nice. So this cave itself, discovered 1952. The two 19 year old boys, they're part of a bigger caving expedition. With the day off, they decided to come down, they saw a stream going underneath the rock face. Well, okay, there's a stream going underneath a rock. It has to be a cave somewhere. So what they do, they pull all the rubbish out of the way, jump into the cave, and then they're in for a four and a half hour journey, which has made them heroes in the cave world for the rest of their lives. <laughs> we start off this cave, there's a little entrance, you'll see it after I show you, it's close to the fairy village. You actually come out into this tunnel here. But to get into this tunnel, you have to climb up a 60 meter cliff. So that goes back about 40 metres, that's the big tunnel, hits a big cliff, so it's 60 metres, and you go to the surface and you're out. Oh, I did it <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where I was going, imagine the two boys who didn't know where they were going, they're trying to discover. You can't go back and forth. Can't. Well, this one you can, you can turn around in this one, alright. Mm. Once you get to here, this is actually an actual cabin, if you shine the torch up there, you can see all the clay on the, on the roof there. There's a little tunnel up there, it goes nowhere. All this is a natural, this has been here for close to 50 million years, this little cabin here. Originally they thought the stream came down and eroded this away and hit harder rock and then disappeared. Over here, okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> they weren't tall lads, were they? Well, I tell you what, I don't think they were tall, they were definitely went fat anyway. <laughs> Look at the This is originally 
the rock is extended from here, so this is just like a little chamber here. And that's where they used to hang out in there. They called it the grotto. It's just like Father Christmas has showed up. <laughs> You've got 100 meters and there's your presence, you can get out safely. And that's what they did. They had a choice when they got here, they realized, oh God, they can get out. They just come down the one tunnel, so they, they're safe. The only problem they had, they were running out of torches at this point. They had two torches, last about eight hours, two torches, about four hours each. They were four hours under the ground so far. They were down to one torch already. They had a choice. Obviously, it'd be quicker going back out because all the rubble's out of the way already. Probably get climbed through in about an hour. So I cannot keep on going and see this waterfall. So that's what they did. And they kept on crawling, pretty much the same small tunnel all the way down. It does actually, once it hits the waterfall, there is actually a crevasse all the way up so you can stand up and you can turn around. So they were safe as hours once they got 20 meters down that way. So they did it in the dark. They were so worried about losing the light. They turn the torch off and they keep on. Okay, but let me get out of the stream. They're about 20 yards past us, they didn't see it. No, oh, I'll turn my big lights on, will I? Please, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> well. That is the world's third largest stalactite. Seven and a half meters long, weighs about 10 tons. <laughs> Way it's been absolutely baffling scientists since it was discovered in 1952. It's an absolute scientific enigma. They think they figure it out once, mm -hmm. and some other stuff comes along and they have to figure it out again. Then something else comes along and they have to figure it out. I'll give you a brief history when we get down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. The whole that grows was about the size of a manhole cover. It's been grown through the same hole in four different stages for a very, very good time. But luckily, it's like an upside down tree, so it's actually got roots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, originally, now the guys came down. If you shine your torch on that big hole down there, you'll see a hole. That's where they came out. Yeah. There's a bit of a jet there. It's an arsenic that drop down there. Yeah. So they come out down the bottom there. They crawl through and they actually come out just past those boulders there, that little pond there. That's eventually where they come out. Wow. So we're standing, and they've dropped a good five or six metres. Which is... Uh, and sides, the shore for the one they keep on falling over on us. Stalactite comes from the ceiling. This is the stalactite. This is the stalactite on the floor. So set up above, it's made out of a substance called calcite. 
This is calcite here. I mean, the calcite was, hold on. If you look inside it, the very edges, this is the best edge. See in there. So, well, yeah, so this is, well, this, this is not this stalactite, it's off another one further up in the cave. But you can see the inside of it's hollow, it's like little hollow channels inside it. If you're wondering where, see it there? Yeah. If you're wondering where the calcium comes from, it's limestone, it's the remains of sea creatures. I never went down there first, we discovered about 20 years later. We brought to the very top, there's a gap in the clay. Mm -hmm. You can fall on the clay, you can slide on the next one. It's a big mud snake, don't you? That goes all the way up to the surface. Is it still active? Not in this cave, no. We don't know what stopped. We think it must have been like one of the ice ages or something. And the clay that has shifted something on the bottom and it sealed it off. The, the stalactite next door actually grows to a hole like this, but probably about twice the size of that. So it isn't that big. You could literally just about fit through it if it wasn't in the way. The water, as you can see, it comes down, it comes down in a circular motion and it roams all the wrong way. And you end up in these dome shapes. Like this. Two little cave guys. They enter the cave back. That's exactly the same as the other cave. And they're called bedding things. So it's not us looking making the cave look nice but choosing it out. Mm. They actually, if you look at the very back, you'll see it clearly when we go up, there's a crack in the rock at the back there. Bottom chunk is falling down, the top half is still in place. They formed in these little ice ages every time the earth freezes over, all the water gets sucked out of the ocean. When the rock gets exposed, you get volcanic action. I'm going to show you the fossilized fish on the right. I'm going to show you again. It's quite a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a fossilized coral. No, the stalagmite on the bottom. That's what's going to happen next door. you are going to have to wait about 400,000 years for it. We'll come back. We'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> on sale up above Simon's Christmas party. It's cool. These little things are soda straws. They're actually baby stalactites. Now these ones grow about an inch every 250 years. And what happens then, if they come down through like that hole in the ceiling, they form one of these masses, a rock called chert, mm. which is like a volcanic glass, and they used to make axes out of it in the Stone Age. Mm. There's axe factories down in Doolin if you're staying down there. And up in Fenora as well. That tunnel, that goes all the way back down there. It's like a letter V. You go down, you slide down on your belly, and you climb up the full 80 metres back to the surface. Have you done that one? Oh, God, no. It's a fish, yeah. So they think it's a crinoid, but then we had a biologist on you a couple of weeks ago, he's saying it's more like a, like a, a ragworm or something. Mm. Oh. So the, the jury's out at the moment. <laughs>